It is 16 July 2022. In this uh, skid mark, I'm going to touch on a few articles that I saw today. And uh, I'm not going to read through all the articles, I'm just going to handle the headlines. And so I'd suggest you uh, pause the video if you want to read the full snippet. Some of them I will read in full, some not. I'm sitting here today and I am really deeply disturbed about the things that I see happening all around us. I'm sitting here on the southern tip of Africa and uh, Europe and America is far away places for me physically. But there is a lot of ancestral bonds, especially with Europe. But the things that I see disturbs me. The thing that I am mostly disturbed about is the clear lack of statesmen in the West and the clear absence of diplomats in the West. All I can see coming out of the mouths from the collective West leadership is war, 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 war. And millions of lives are being destroyed and millions of people are being displaced. And all this leadership are talking about is war, war, war. The first article is quite disturbing. It is from uh, Tulsi Gabbard and she said the heading is The world is nearing the brink of nuclear war. President Joe Biden's administration is driving the world towards a devastating nuclear conflict by using the Ukraine crisis to fight a proxy war with Russia. The American people need to understand the seriousness of the situation that the Biden administration and leaders in Washington have put us in, Gabbard said on Wednesday night in a Fox News interview. Now, what she says is true. And it seems to me that the Biden administration are really not equipped to be in the position they are. For reasons that we can discuss in other skid marks, uh, the White House are being perceived as being the seat of leadership for the collective West. So the President of America is usually seen and referred to as the leader of the West. But what we are seeing currently there is absolutely disgusting. One of the Kennedy senators or representatives, I can't remember his name, said that the, the leadership of today in the White House reminds him of people sniffing crack cocaine in a parking lot. It is impossible to have an intelligent discussion with them. That was what he said. And I think he's right. Yeah, if you listen to some of the things. I, I'm going to stick back on this. I live here in South Africa. We had a president here that denied the existence of AIDS. Then we had another president that believe that by taking a shower you can prevent HIV. I mean, <laughs> okay, leave that alone. Then we had a Minister of Health that promoted the eating of a certain type of potato to prevent HIV. I don't, I'm not even going to talk about the senseless shit that they spouted during the pestilence. But we've learned to accept these things from them because they are generally in a category with an IQ average of 68. But when you see this type of crap come out of the mouths from American leaders and European leaders, it feels to me that I have to tear my hair out. It will drive me to booze. Now this next one is, uh, this is a, a video that I found on Telegram. And I've just spent an hour looking at it, and it's all about Russophobia. Russophobia, history of hate. Dark, barbaric, and savage as our rulers and philosophers in the West have portrayed Russia throughout history. The image lives on and flourishes in the media and popular culture. The documentary traces the origins of the anti-Russian narrative and explores who benefits from the idea of an irrational and dangerous nation. It also takes a look at how anti-Russian sentiments spread across Europe. Researchers and historians 
and the writers talk about the shaping of the Western disdain for Russia from the Great Schism to the contemporary anti-Russia hysteria. Now, I did invest an hour and watch this and it is shocking. But what I will say is I came away from that with a firm belief that my instincts are correct. The collective West is evil and all the things that they are doing and have done, they are projecting onto Russia. Pure projection. If you can find this thing on Telegram, I suggest you look at it. It is shocking. If it was not for the Russian nation, Europe would not be here today. And now again, it is Russia that is fighting for the survival of Europe, actually. Ordinary Europeans, not that elite cabal sitting in Brussels and controlling the lives of the ordinary people. There is, uh, there is big problems on the horizon for the Europeans in the EU. And they better wake up or they're going to find themselves in a neck deep in trouble. I am absolutely stunned about the stupidity I see there, how that European leadership embarked on the Russian sanctions war. And now that they see where it's going, they don't have the guts to admit they were wrong. They cannot admit they were wrong. But NATO is used by America to prod the bear all the time. And Europe must wake up because it is America that is driving you to hell. And then the next one, it's a short snip. Pandemic of protests, Sri Lanka, Italy, Haiti. Be it corrupt presidents, greedy governments or gang-ridden fuel crisis, the world is simply saying no. And if you look at this, you have to wonder, where is this going to stop? Because the reality is that the ordinary people, let's call them the people on the street, has had enough. The two years of hell through the pestilence has pushed people to the limit. This energy crisis that has been orchestrated by America and the cabal in Brussels was uncalled for. But the people is rising up. And by the way, I read another article which is now saying that the CIA sits behind most of the shit in Sri Lanka. What else? That is how America operates. They accuse Russia of be wanting to expand their empire. In the meanwhile, it is the Americans that does it and they're all over the world. All over the world. They, the Americans, have ruined the Middle East. They've bombed the Middle East back into the Middle Ages. And they get away with it. And people look other way. And the choir sings their songs. And woe on you if you differ from that tune. Now this next one, I have done skid marks that I touched on it. China's economy shrinks on back of the Shanghai lockdowns. The country has registered its lowest quarterly growth since the outbreak of the pestilence, largely due to shutdowns in Shanghai, the world's busiest port. Although Beijing has promised tax refunds, free rent, and other aid to promote economic recovery, most predictions forecast China to fall short of its 5.5 growth target this year. Between April to June, it actually shrank 2.6%. Now, take note, and we must take the following into consideration. The Chinese government is not known to play softly, softly, softly with its citizens when it comes to taking decisions that affect the masses. And I cannot understand that the Western powers, the so-called collective West, did not smell a rat 
the moment that China locked Shanghai down. I am of the opinion that the Chinese government is sacrificing the people in Shanghai in order to strangle the American economy because, and I'm not, I don't have first-hand experience, but I'm sure Americans know how the supply lines has been disrupted through this. And nobody can accuse China of anything because all China say, sorry, it's the pestilence. We have to lock down. That is, that is the rule. When it happens, you lock down. So that monster that was created two years ago is still eating. And then I look at this one and I get extremely angry. At least two killed and attacked on Donetsk bus station. And then there's a warning of graphic content. An attack on a bus station in Donetsk left at least two killed and six injured. The authorities of the Donetsk People's Republic informed on yesterday, on Thursday. The bus station was hit by the M777 howitzer, largely used by U.S. forces. Now, I have said it many times, I have got zero, zero empathy with the Zelensky regime. I, force, I perceive them and I see them and I know that they are Zatsis and that's the end of it. And the so-called Kulev of West, holier than thou, are pumping weapons and money into the Ukraine to support that Zatsi re regime. And they give them these weapons under the pretext that they will be fighting the Russians with it. And what does those low-life, useless cretins do? They use those weapons to shoot civilians in the Donbass. And you European and American taxpayers. You are financing these atrocities. I hope you can sleep well. And here comes the thing. I did a skit mark and a brick mark about touching on this. EU sues Hungary over LGBT representation law. Now, I'm going to read this. The European Commission is suing Hungary with the EU's Court of Justice claiming local laws infringe on freedom of speech. The country's Child Protection Act has previously gained controversy in the Union as it was designed to limit portrayal of homosexuality and gender reassignment in content intended for minors like education material or media. The rationale behind the law was explained as a push to protect children's well-being, specifically from pedophilia. The EC is also concerned about the club radio, a local liberal radio station whose broadcast license was not reviewed, renewed by the government. Now, on this point, I'm just going to say this. It is this moral decay of the collective West that is the driving force between, uh, behind their own implosion. Look at this. Hungary is a fairly conservative government in charge and they were voted in with an overwhelming majority. And now, here comes that EC cabal in Brussels again, flatly ignoring the Hungarian people's choices and wants them to stop limiting the activities of the alphabet crowd. What is that? I did a, a skit mark earlier on Putin's secret weapon against the West. And this is one of his weapons. He is watching how this absolute lack of moral morality is destroying Western society. These things will not happen in Russia. And then here's the one that we need to think about. Russian oil price cap won't solve the energy crisis, says the Indonesian finance minister. The US proposed limits on the price of Russian oil could further exacerbate the global energy crisis as it would not help to solve the supply issues the world is facing. Now, listen again. Supply issues. That is what sits behind this current 
energy crisis. But take into consideration, Venezuela cannot produce American sanctions. Iran cannot produce American sanctions. Russia cannot produce American sanctions. And the list goes on and on and on. And then people are surprised that the rest of the world is slowly but surely gravitating towards the BRICS block. Why? Because the BRICS block promotes free and fair trade without interfering in people's domestic issues. This American monster, the USA, they want to dictate to the world how to live, how to trade, where to trade, how to govern themselves, every aspect of the world's lives they want to dictate. I saw a meme this morning that USA, United Snakes of America, and I thought to myself, that is actually quite applicable. I am sick and tired of this warmongering. I see Tony Blair, I will mention it in another skit mark, Tony Blair is now calling for the West to stand up to China. What the hell are they talking about? Does that guy not really understand? And then this one, I'm just going to touch on the headlines. Twitter versus Musk. No nonsense judge already ordered merger deal to close. Now, this is uh, going to be an interesting fight. This is, uh, Twitter is suing Musk because he doesn't want to continue with his buyout of Twitter because he claims that they are lying about the numbers of bot accounts on the Twitter servers. And they sued him, and this judge said, right, it can go ahead, the case can go ahead. Now, Twitter has a problem, because automatically Musk now has the right. Okay, I can't find it in this article here or somewhere else where I read it. Now, according to the legal rules in America, Musk has now got the right to request details, details that they must provide that will be used in the case. And let's end this Saturday with a doozy of a what the fuck is this? Okay, here is a question. How many brain cells between the two of them? Waiting, waiting. Okay, how many? Wrong. And it's a meme of Harris. And it says, where she say, why would we waste money on a wall? We need to increase welfare benefits for the illegal immigrants. Guys, that. <laughs> I can only laugh. And while I'm laughing, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and please comment. And then, above all, let's go and have a bright.